Welcome. I'm Dr. Melissa Piasecki, and I'm so proud to be the Acting Dean of the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. It's my honor to maintain UNR Med's momentum and continue to build our future while the search for our next dean is underway. Like many institutions, our School of Medicine had its share of challenges in the last year. These include hiring freezes, budget cuts, disruptions in medical education, and the need to care for patients more than ever before. I am so appreciative of our faculty, staff, residents, and students. Thanks to their talents, strength, and dedication, we've continued to succeed and make progress despite these challenges. One way we're able to benchmark our progress is through external rankings, such as the annual rankings of nearly 200 medical schools published by U.S. News and World Report. The 2021 rankings reflect UNR Med's commitment to our mission and our values. For example, our school is ranked 30th in the country for medical school graduates practicing in primary care. We're so proud, always, of our medical students and the great ways that they serve our communities. Among medical schools from across the country, we're proud to have been ranked 26th for medical school diversity, with 22% of medical student enrollment from underrepresented groups. We are tremendously proud of our basic science faculty. UNR Med earned a top 25 spot in ranking of total federal research grants per full-time faculty member. This funding represents world-class research in biomedical science right here on our campus. These rankings are so meaningful. They reflect our dedication to our institutional missions, excellence in education, research and clinical care, and a culture of diversity, equity, inclusion. And they align so well with the University of Nevada Reno's goals to build on our university's Carnegie R1 research classification and set our sights in membership of the prestigious Association of American Universities. This year saw another major achievement for UNR Med. Last summer, we finalized a high level affiliation with our long-term partner in healthcare, Renown Health, and we're proud on June 28th when Governor of Nevada proclaimed that day University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine and Renown Health Affiliation Day in Nevada. This affiliation establishes Nevada's first integrated health system and will result in opportunities to develop our healthcare workforce, recruit new providers to our area, expand specialty care for our community, and expand access to clinical research trials. On October 1st, as a result of the great work by our UNR Med and renowned teams, the School of Medicine's clinical practice is integrated with renowned health, and our patients are already benefiting from this integration. I'm so grateful and admiring of our faculty and leaders in family medicine, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, psychiatry, women's health, occupational medicine, sports medicine, and speech pathology for all your hard work and extra effort during this time and the inevitable bumps and disruptions that happened. You have been remarkable. As acting dean for UNR Med, I'm also honored to serve as the chief academic officer for Renown Health, overseeing their clinical research and medical education functions. This fall, we are building the office for the Chief Academic Officer to better serve the hardworking students and residents who complete their education at Renown Health. I am grateful to my renowned colleagues for their support as together we build something completely new. After 26 years with the School of Medicine, I remain inspired and amazed by the accomplished and gifted students, faculty, staff, and alumni who serve our community. I want to highlight some of their achievements, innovations, and dedication. I'm so excited to introduce to you seven of our many superstars to illustrate not only our tremendous resilience and responsiveness throughout the pandemic, but also the brilliance of UNR Med's future. The Nevada State Public Health Lab is part of the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine and serves the entire state of Nevada by rapidly detecting and communicating public health threats. In November 2019, Dr. Mark Pandori became the lab's director as well as an associate professor of pathology. When the pandemic hit just months later, Dr. Pandori and his team were ready. They've played a critical and heroic role in leading the state's COVID response, including serving in an advisory capacity to Governor Sisolak and identifying the first case of reinfection in the United States. To tell you a little bit more of this story, here's Dr. Pandori. 
I have a saying about the COVID-19 pandemic, which I use in various media engagements. In the course of the pandemic, we've learned far more about anthropology than we have biology. I think one of the things I'm implying there is that so much of the work science and medicine has sought to achieve to protect the public has been undermined by various aspects of human behavior. It's ironic that a pandemic that knows no racial, cultural, or religious boundaries continues to rage because we are not unified in our response. Thinking of this invokes pessimism about society, which seems to be all that many people can muster these days. But our School of Medicine has consistently shown me the opposite. When the public health laboratory needed significant components to continue providing the state of Nevada with testing, everyone in the school offered support. It took the form of multiple divisions of UNR Med working together to build the kits necessary to continue to provide COVID-19 testing to Nevada. Within the broader university campus, we've collaborated to produce some of the first genomic data on this virus in the published literature. Students have engaged the process, and they do important daily work within the lab to perpetuate the success of our response. We've shared with the world important findings on test functionality and limitations. We've served as persistent, clear, and accurate consultants to our citizenry on the technical and medical aspects of this pandemic. So I won't have any of this pessimism. I'm proud to be part of an institution that unified to solve problems and to help people. Together, we did the right things for the people of our city, our state, and the world. UNR Med is proud to have a new master's program in physician assistant studies. We graduated our second class of students into their new careers in patient care in 2021. Amanda Wong was completing her second year of UNR Med's physician assistant studies program when the pandemic arrived. She and her classmates, along with our dedicated PA faculty, pivoted and persevered by finding new educational opportunities. Before graduating with the class of 2020 in August, Amanda completed an aerospace medicine elective with SpaceX in Boca Chica, Texas. She is now caring for patients as part of a robust clinical practice. I am pleased to introduce Amanda Wong. Hi, I'm Amanda Wong, a graduate of UNR Med's PA program, class of 2020. PA school entails a rigorous workload and a demanding schedule. Being a part of UNR Med's inaugural class added another element of complexity to my journey. However, with perseverance and support from community healthcare providers, I was motivated to overcome those challenges, and in doing so, I was inspired to enter the field as a primary care provider. While I enjoyed various clinical rotations during PA school, my rural family medicine rotation in Elko, Nevada, and an elective rotation that I had coordinated with SpaceX in Boca Chica, Texas, influenced me most. Both of these rotations provided me with a unique opportunity to work with underserved populations in a rural setting. The family medicine PAs that mentored me in Elko demonstrated the reality in providing exceptional and compassionate care to the community. In a similar setting, my experience in Texas focused on providing triage and general medical care to the SpaceX workforce in a resource limited context. This pushed me to navigate treating even simple problems with careful consideration given the remoteness of the rocket launch facility. These experiences allowed me to expand my knowledge and critical thinking skills in approaching each problem from a holistic perspective, a lesson valuable not only for the practice of medicine and primary care, but for any obstacle encountered in life. The example and passion for practicing quality evidence-based medicine set forth by the ELCO PAs and my experience in Texas encouraged me to begin my first job upon graduation at a federally qualified health center as a family medicine PA in the town I grew up in, Carson City, Nevada. Currently, I am living in California and I am practicing in women's health. However, in several years, I plan on returning to Nevada and practicing in family medicine again, as I would like to give back to the community that helped foster my professional growth. I will utilize the skills that I have learned and incorporate it into a whole person, comprehensive plan of care for my patients. As part of the School of Medicine, the Sanford Center for Aging serves Nevada's elders. When the pandemic hit, the Sanford Center built an innovative partnership with the state called Nevada COVID-19 Aging Network. In the months that followed, 
the Sanford Center for Aging became a major organizing force statewide, providing social and medical support to older adults who were at risk and isolated. The expertise of the Sanford Center and the director, Dr. Peter Reed, are now sought by national agencies who want to learn about and emulate the success of the Nevada CAN program. Here's Dr. Peter Reed. It has been one of the highlights of my career to work with a group of statewide partners to develop and rapidly mobilize resources to support Nevada's older adults during the COVID pandemic. In March of 2020, it was apparent to leaders in the aging services field that older adults who are highly vulnerable to COVID-19 would need a wide range of resources to stay home, stay safe, and stay connected. In collaboration with Dina Schmidt at the Nevada Aging and Disability Services Division, Jeff Klein at Nevada Senior Services in Las Vegas, and Dr. Jennifer Carson of the Dementia Engagement, Education, and Research Program in the School of Public Health here at UNR, we launched the Nevada COVID-19 Aging Network Rapid Response or Nevada CAN. After a two week planning period in the early days of the stay at home order, Nevada CAN launched delivery of its services. We mobilized three action teams to fulfill our core objectives, food and medication delivery, virtual social support, and access to telehealth services. Each of these teams were coalitions in and of themselves with dozens of community-based partners actively engaged. During the 18 months since launching, Nevada CAN partners delivered over 500,000 meals, 20,000 telehealth visits, and 5,000 hours of volunteer-driven social support to Nevada's older adults. After we released a planning resource guide for other states to use as a model for their COVID aging services response, the speed and creativity of this innovation was recognized nationally with numerous invitations to share our work through the media, academic, professional, and legislative groups, including being invited to testify about Nevada CAN to the U.S. Senate Special Committee on Aging. The innovations that were created in Nevada CAN's rapid response continue today and are evolving to become institutionalized resources within Nevada's Aging Services Network. I'm grateful to my colleagues at the Sanford Center for Aging and UNR Med as well as partners and organizations all over Nevada who contributed and continue to contribute to the high impact achieved by this initiative. Together, Nevada can. It's impossible to overstate the quality and quantity of the innovative work our School of Medicine researchers conducted during and in response to the pandemic. UNR Med basic science researchers studied the genomic sequencing of the virus, compared viral mutations at both ends of the state, and led by Dr. Subhash Verma, Associate Professor of Microbiology and Immunology, they designed and established the efficacy of a novel receptacle that decontaminates medical protective gear, including the gowns and masks that are often in short supply. Here's Dr. Subhash Verma to tell you more. The SARS-CoV-2 pandemic did so much damage to almost every aspect of our lives. But on a positive side, it certainly made us work more collaboratively to achieve a common goal, which is to defeat the COVID-19 virus, whether by developing a vaccine in record time, uh, based on the decades of work by virologists and basic scientists, or by collaborating on other in interventional approaches to slow down or even stop the, the spread of this virus. Since we were working with SARS-CoV-2 virus from the beginning of this pandemic, and we have the expertise and facility to conduct high containment research, we were approached to evaluate a viral inactivation device. Uh, this work was done in collaboration with Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory for determining how efficacious this device is in inactivating SARS-CoV-2 on different surfaces. We found that coronaviruses can be effectively elim eliminated from the PPE or any variable items by treating through this device. This collaboration is ongoing and we are currently looking at inactivation of other pathogenic organism for its use beyond this pandemic. We recently received funding from the National Institute of Health and Center for Disease Control to extend this work as a measure of pandemic preparedness. I'm thankful to the member of my team and our department, as well as the university's Institutional Biosafety Committee, who constantly help us to conduct these high 
biological safety level tasks such as SARS-CoV-2 work here on campus. The convalescent plasma study, which studies the antibodies present in patients who have recovered from COVID-19, is a perfect example of the UNR Med and Renown Health Partnership in action. The integration of the offices of clinical research at UNR Med and Renown has continued to ramp up under the guidance and leadership of Danielle Eaton, Director of Clinical Research for both institutions. Her commitment and energy are paving the way for expanding clinical research, a key goal for our university and our affiliation. Here's Danielle Eaton. I've had the privilege of participating in some of the very first official collaborative initiatives made possible through UNR Med and Renown Health's affiliation. Over the past year, we were able to engage with our students, residents, and faculty in clinical research in a meaningful way through the convalescent plasma trial. This study was a combined effort between Renown and UNR Med to serve our community. I continue to be proud of our team's flexibility, perseverance, expertise, and compassion in everything we have accomplished. The affiliation with Renown provides with us with exciting opportunities to keep stepping up for our community in a bigger and broader way. Looking forward, the possibilities for discovery and research and outcomes that will positively impact our patients and our neighbors in real time are very personal to me. I was born in Reno at Washoe Med, which is now Renown Health, and I've lived here my entire life. Through this affiliation, we are gaining momentum, and we intend to continue to build the infrastructure to support our scientists and learners to contribute to and engage with our community. As we create opportunities for ideas to take flight, I am thrilled to be able to personally contribute to our collective vision of a healthy Nevada. As medical schools work to educate physicians who are allies and advocates for all their patients, Students are leaders in this educational evolution. Mirabel Daffinone has led the implementation of a scholarly concentration in medical social justice. This allows medical students to research healthcare disparities and lead change. And led by Sonia Figueroa, the UNR Med Allyship Forum explores social determinants of health and common implicit biases toward marginalized groups. The work they are doing is changing medical education and UNR Med for the better. Here are second year students, Mirabel Daffinone and Sonia Figueroa. It's an honor to serve as one of the student representatives for the Council on Diversity Initiatives. As mentioned, I am part of the scholarly concentration in medical social justice. The concentration addresses local health care disparities. Last year, we focused on COVID vaccine hesitancy in the Latinx community. We were able to vaccinate 673 people in a vaccine clinic we organized with the School of Public Health. Also since February, Sonia and I have been collaborating diligently with the faculty and staff to incorporate meaningful change into the curriculum. We have also amplified student voices by voting on numerous policies that further diversify our UNR Med community. I am happy to be serving as an advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion. I look forward to the continued opportunity to foster conversations about equity, cultural competency, and matters of great importance. I've had the privilege of spearheading and participating in the UNR Med Allyship Forum. During this five-part mini-series, each diversity and affinity group represented at UNR Med hosts a discussion to teach the social determinants of health and implicit biases faced by patients and the groups they represent. We then take this information and talk through a clinical vignette as a group, brainstorming ways to better treat patients who identify within this population. Our first allyship forum took place in spring 2021. We received exceptional feedback from participants stating they appreciated an inclusive and welcoming environment that fosters positive learning experiences and enjoyed how the structure allowed for a significant amount of interaction. This further motivates me to continue ensuring our marginalized patients will be in caring and culturally sensitive hands. We intend to implement the allyship forum in the spring of every school year and will continuously strive to develop a more robust program. I am humbled and appreciative of all the wonderful support and feedback we have received thus far and hope to see you at the Spring 2022 Allyship Forum. 
I hope you're as impressed as I am with the incredible students, alumni, and faculty members who are representing you in our Met and our communities. I appreciate you joining me to learn from a small sampling of the many people who make me proud to be part of the UNR Med community. There are many more stories to tell about resident physicians who contribute to all of our missions with great energy and dedication, about the creative and committed staff members without whom UNR Med could not achieve its missions. Please take a few minutes and explore our State of the School website. Here you will find a sampling of the many School of Medicine stories that made headlines during the 2020-2021 academic year and the many people who make UNR Med so special. You'll learn more about our faculty and staff, Nevada's pandemic response, our accomplished students and our commitment to their education, innovative community outreach, and critically important research. You'll learn more about our historic affiliation with Renown and our commitment and contributions to our community. As 2021 comes to a close, you and our Med looks forward to the opportunities ahead. I hope you'll continue to follow us as we work toward recruiting new physician faculty, growing our affiliation with Renown, implementing our strategic plan for clinical research, exploring plans to expand the Nevada State Public Health Lab, and preparing for what comes next in basic science. Our goals are ambitious, yet achievable, because of the strengths of our faculty, our university, our partners, and our community. And we look forward to sharing our progress towards an even brighter future during the next day of the school. In the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. I look forward to hearing from you, and thank you.